you want to see a really bad day, check this out. And if you want to learn how to avoid this and not have things like this happen, watch this video. Woo! That had to suck. Hey friends, uh, making a great video today on spark testing. I'm gonna get in the details in a second, but I'm gonna tell you this right now. Go to the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you how you can get one of these for free for yourself. Have you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell? You're gonna be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you wanna bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to How to Wrench. <laughs> one thing is I wanna say, uh, thank you guys, all the guys who support Shane here. The guy's a really, really good guy. Got to travel all the way out from Spokane, Washington to come learn how to do some stuff on bikes. We're having some fun, doing some riding. And he's just a really good, genuine character person that uh, kind of just blew my mind. Uh, that someone here on YouTube making content like this on how to work on motorcycles to help people like me, who's uh, challenged in a lot of ways on how to do anything. So thank <laughs> you guys very that. much. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Love meeting YouTube fans. So this has been a lot of fun. Been uh, having some good meals, uh, doing a lot of wrenching. Uh, last night we made some more content on the generator. Yep. So we're, doing, we're just kind of really having some fun. But he wanted to uh, to get a deep dive. And this is one of my own vehicles here that uh, pretty sure had a bad motor. So I'm showing him how I go about diagnosing it from beginning to end. I mean, a lot of people yank out a motor and start looking at the nuts and bolts. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't even start there. We started with testing electrical and the point we're at right now are we start with cooling system so we tested the cooling system to make sure its integrity was good but we're at this point where we're testing uh the uh, spark integrity and the reason i like to check the spark integrity is because i want to uh know that this bike had spark before i took it apart last thing i want to do is put a whole motor together maybe accidentally pinch a wire have a spark issue and now i hand a customer a bill and uh, find out that it won't run because it doesn't have spark. And I go, did I break something or was it already a problem? And customers have a really hard time of going, wait a second, I just paid you to do the motor. I thought that's what the problem was. Might have had two problems. We might have mechanical damage and electrical damage. So we are verifying spark. And today we have a really cool tool that we're gonna show you how to use that's gonna make spark testing really, really, really super safe to give you a visual of spark. I've done all kinds of tools and testers on how to measure spark. You can see those are our playlist, but we're gonna break that old habit of laying a spark plug on the head and, and doing that. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, now's the time to hit that subscribe button and we're gonna tune into the lesson. And my pal here is gonna learn from the backside of the camera. Thanks, cool. Sterling. No problem. There's three common tests we do when we have an engine that won't run. We're going to check it for compression, we're going to check it for fuel, and we're going to check it for spark. In this video, I'm going to show you an amazing new tool that is going to change the way that I've been doing spark testing for over 20 years. Let me tell you all about it. All right, first things first. I'm about to show you something really cool, but how much does this thing cost? Are you ready for this? It's 125 bucks. As of today, it's actually $22 US, and if you get the whole three plug kit, they do three different plug sizes, it's under 40 bucks. Check it out. If your shop is attached to your house, I can't stress enough how much you gotta watch this video. I mean, for you, your spouse, your kids, your investment and in everything you have, watch this video and reflect on shop safety when it comes to spark testing. If anything else, do it for that. How to Wrench has been on YouTube since 2008. We've done hundreds of videos on electrical training and a lot of those are on spark testing. So when it comes to why we should make another video, there's an old saying, there's a lot of different ways to roof a house and there's a real important reason to use the data for visual spark testing and that's why we're gonna cover this video because of how different this tool is from making it safe. When it comes to spark testing, it comes down to really two things. Does the engine run or not? And this is the type of tool that I grab when the engine doesn't run and I want to see the sparks. You're going to hear me calling it different than a lot of other people. People kind of just generically reference as spark testing and I call it visual spark testing because what I'm really trying to say is, hey, I want you to prove it to me. I want to see that you can spark. And that's why it's so dangerous. If you're testing spark the old school way, you're really taking a risk to, you know, burn down your shop or have an explosion and actually really get hurt. I'd like to note two major benefits of using this tool and why you want to consider it for your shop. Let's start with reason number one, safety. As you can see, you can see the spark safely enclosed inside this viewing bulb. I want you to think about something that maybe you're mentoring a kiddo, a spouse, a neighbor, a friend, just a buddy, whatever that looks like, and they're glued to your every move. This is a great opportunity to teach someone safety or this kind of content to share with them. 
a lot of people take for granted that just everybody knows that. And as you'll see from this next case study, it's just not the case. It's, it's really dangerous. Take a look at this photo with me, and I'm not trying to pick on anyone. This just runs around the internet, kind of a, as a good reminder to spook us on on safety and the things that we need to think about, or at least that's how I view a lot of the crazy stuff, right? But when you look at this photo, you're going to see a ton of tools, and you're going to see just the in-depth of this project. I want you to ask yourself, by looking at this, would you assume that this person most likely has had safety training at some point in their career, and they they know what they were doing. So take a look at the video and see if you actually feel the same. I mean, the freaking car is on fire and he's still cranking it over even more. And no offense to this fellow, but he surely doesn't understand fire safety and how turning the engine over is actually drawing more air in and actually fueling the fire and making it even worse. Watch him start to panic. You know, sharing videos like this could actually save someone's life. For 99% of all the vehicles out there, what people do is they typically pull a spark plug they take the plug out. I'm gonna get up close and show you this here in a second. They go ahead and they stick it in the in the cap, they lay it on the block, and they check for spark. A million people been doing it, and there's been a million accidents too. I'm gonna to show you some clips from the video from uh, from these guys' website on the spark plug testing kit. Um, they're out of uh, Australia. They've got this patent pending tester, patent pending pending tester that actually allows the spark testing to happen encapsulated so that it's safe. But let's just talk about the real world. So people have been doing this forever. And as you can see from some of these videos and accidents, um, I stumbled across, uh, across this tool and then we connected on it. And right away, I remember thinking about problems I've had in my career. I remember spark testing on a van one time where I'm sitting there cranking on it and it had bad plug wires and the whole bay of the uh, van caught on fire and made a, made a super mess, right? And I'm sitting there, you know, spraying carb clean around looking for intake leaks and it's a big problem. I had a Kawasaki Ninja one time with bad spark plug wires that lit up and had a huge mess. So if you think this will never happen to you, I've had it happen to me for sure two times. I think there's a story I'm probably forgetting about, but twice in my life I've had a fire doing spark testing or turning a motor over. When we think about taking the spark plug out of the cylinder and that fact that we're going to crank it over and you think, oh, Shane, I'm smart now. I'll pull the fuel pump fuse or I'll take the carburetor, I'll take the fuel source away. There's still fuel in that cylinder enough that all it takes is a little spark to have a flame and to have a big problem. So <clears throat> this tool just makes a lot of sense to me. Now I'm working in a safe environment. I have a fire extinguisher right behind me waiting. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to get you in close and show you like how you would do it wrong. So first off, I'm gonna take this and just kind of set this, uh, set this on the block here somehow so that I can get spark. This is a terrible place because it's right above the spark plug hole. I'm doing this intentional. And then what you do, I've got a zip tie in the clutch lever, it's a Japanese bike, you normally have to have those pulled. And what you typically do is you put your safety glasses on. I'd go here and I'd check for spark and that's what I'd do. So let's get the camera in close so you can see the spark. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the starter button. Okay. Notice how close we are to the fuel source. You know, train your techs, use safe tools like the one we're about to show you and reduce the risk. So a couple different things that we just saw from that. So we have, uh, our battery's getting a little weak from cranking over and cranking over, but we have, this, this particular bike is a V-twin. It has a four plug or excuse me, it has a dual plug head, so there's four spark plugs. So we only have the one out in this front cylinder, <clears throat> which means it have no compression, but the starter's just still having the drag of the rear cylinder being under compression. But one of the things that I noticed is that the spark wasn't consistent. It like spark a couple times and quit. That's a really good indication it could just be the spark plug itself. But once again, it's a little bit harder to analyze uh, with having used spark plugs. All I'm doing at this point is I wanna know, does it have spark? I can't check timing, I can't check anything else at this point. I'm just kind of doing a yes, no, before I go ahead and unplug all these sensors and then you know work on it and hopefully I'll avoid pinching any wires. So uh, that's something to consider. So why don't we get in close here and look at what comes in the kit. What we're doing is we need to somehow get that spark to be in this uh, encapsulated adapter. 
and we need to be able to hook it up to a couple different types of plugs. There's two really main types of spark plugs out there, and that is where they're studded or a non-studded. Sometimes you might see it as a terminal, a terminal or a stud spark plug. Get up close there for you. And the kit originally only came with this. So one big thing we said is, hey, if you want to use this for power sports industry, we need some type of adapter that can do these plugs. And sure enough, they have that available now. And that's this one I'm going to show you how to hook up. But <clears throat> we'll have to find out whether the kit is going to be uh, sold with both or one or the other. That part I don't know, but I am going to be able to show you its full function. With a million small engines out there, I could see this one being the huge uh, snowmobile small engines, uh, uh, applications like that, chainsaws, different things that have these studded plugs. A lot of marine engines too. A ton of marine engines have these studded ones. So... I'm a motorcycle guy, and especially Japanese and uh, metric motorcycles, and they most often have this type of uh, plug end on it. So what we need to do is we need to uh, take a look at what was the plug that we had in the bike. So I'm going to go ahead and see that I have this plug, and there's these two things called a decompression earth unit that we're going to thread into the head. That's just going to let the air escape out. So this is, once again, not testing it under compression. What we're doing is we're checking a good contact, a, a good earth contact to the motor to make the spark happen. So we have the 10 millimeter. And what you're going to do with that is we're going to go ahead and just thread that into the spark plug. Hole of the head. Without cross threading it. I've just got that hand tight. I've had success so far with that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start to assemble uh, our tool here. So we're going to start by screwing on this uh, encapsulator, if you will, that'll, that'll keep the spark safe. But I want to show you the inside here. You see this metal washer? That's the grounding unit that that wire is going to hook up, and that contacts the plug and then creates the ground for the unit itself. So we're going to thread the plug um, inside here. And then what we're going to do is we start to look at our cable here we got two ends on this okay so we've got this end with the little blade which is going to go onto that spacer like so that's going to create that ground then we're going to thread the new terminal style one for the terminal spark plug on here okay then we're going to close it up keep that nice and safe and then on this one, we're going to snap onto, we have the, the old stud style that goes onto the earth unit. Okay, so I'm gonna just snap that in place. Okay. Then for the, the stock spark plug itself, now what we have is we have this adapter, so it has the terminal on it. I'm gonna thread that up. You can hear it crunch like as it scrapes across just like it would on the stock plug. Then this is going to sit inside of here, get a good firm fit on there. And now we're at a point where we can go ahead and check the spark without any problem of, of, of a spark source hitting anywhere, anywhere along here. I'm just gonna set this right here so that we can have a good visual for you. There's no sense of me holding it, it's insulated, but I'm not gonna hold a spark plug. So I'm gonna go ahead and test it here. Right, how cool is this it it only takes a couple of seconds to hook this up but we're avoiding any potential source of a fire or anything going on you know one thing i want to say is a lot of times also people will disconnect other cylinders and you'll see where manufacturers will have different training that say hey never uh try to operate the spark or the ignition without the coil actually hooked up to the plug or to a, a ground path because in some cases they say you can actually hurt an ECM. I don't know if any, you know you ever have, but I have heard from manufacturers that you should never do spark testing just to the air. Even when you lay a spark plug, a plug across the head, if you don't have a good ground and it's not sparking, it has nowhere for that spark to go and the energy is building up backwards into the ignition system. So 
They want it to be grounded. This gives you that really strong permanent ground. It's safe, it's cool, and I think it's pretty neat. So hey, my friends, that is the lesson for today on how you can go ahead and do spark verification safe and not have any issues. I wanna think about a huge portion of our audience are do-it-yourselfers where you might be working in a small confined garage. It's even a bigger deal. I wanna recommend that if you're doing any kind of spark testing, it's a great idea to get the motorcycle out of the garage, get it out into a super ventilated area anytime you're working on this stuff. And the other thing I wanna recommend, like I talked about a second ago, is right on the other side of this table here is my welding area and I have my fire extinguisher. I know where it is, I'm ready to go think about working safe and working smart i want to thank these guys from the spark tag uh spark plug testing unit to send this to us i'm going to put their links below in the video so you know where to get one of these for yourself go to their website if you're in any doubt go to their youtube channel go to their website they have a collection of videos that'll scare you and you'll start to really think about hey what am i doing here you know the risks that i'm taking they're pretty big when we think about just doing open spark testing. But, you know, a lot of times it's it's like a lot of things we don't think about it until someone close to us gets hurt or gets into trouble. And uh, I think they're really thinking ahead of uh, ahead of the game. That's pretty cool. So that's it for today's video. Special thanks to uh, Sterling for being behind the camera there. We're going to get back at it. We got a lot of work to keep going this. We'll see what other cool videos we can come up with. But as always, make sure and like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Make it a great day. And as always, as Sterling's shirt says, he got one of the old original shirts today i'm looking at it but uh as always keep wrenching hey friends as promised here is another giveaway click the link below check this out you can win one of these cool tools for yourself we appreciate you being a fan of the channel and go get it